And hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge, back once again. It's been a little while and I'm doing another video in my series about making custom dust jackets. Um, this is the third video in that series and this is the second series I'm doing about custom stuff. So this is custom dust jackets, the last series was custom comics. And I'm just going to sort of plough on with various bits and pieces. Um, Today what we're going to be covering is some slightly new stuff and some old stuff. We're going to be looking at where we can source images. We're going to be looking at how we can resize pages and also how we can do some more complex repair of images to make them suit what you want in a dust jacket. Um, and also we're going to touch on for the first time how to add new text onto images, which is something we'll cover a lot more in later videos as well. Before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to Gio from um, A Week in Geekdom. Um, he got in touch just saying he had a particular uh, curiosity in me doing some superior Spider-Man hardcovers um, and some dust jackets rather for those hardcovers. Uh, so I thought, you know what, I need something as an example. And although the X-Men Batman mashup from last time seemed to go down quite well, I thought, you know what, why not do something practical? And that rule applies to all you guys. If anyone's got a particular image they want to see me do something with in a particular way, just drop it in the comments below and I'll see if I can accommodate in the next video. Um, but anyway, um, with with no further ado, guys, let's jump straight into it. And we're going to start off, as always, here. This is GIMP, uh, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is the image manipulation software that I recommend that you use. It, obviously, if you've got something else like Photoshop or InDesign, please feel free to use that. As I say all the time, I'm only going to show you what I do, and I'm only going to show you how I do it. And if you think that's rubbish, feel free to ignore me. If you think you can do better, feel free to do better and then tell me, because I'd love to learn. Um, this bit of software is something that's free. You can download it for free. You can install it for free. I would highly recommend you do that because it's a really useful tool to get um, get to grips with. If you don't know how to download and install some software, well, this series just isn't for you, to be honest. Um, but hey, hopefully you've done that. Hopefully you're following along at home. So no further ado, let's have a look at what I'm going to do today. So Gio was curious about um, the Superior Spider-Man dust jacket. So uh, fortunately, I have Superior Spider-Man. I have all three oversized hardcovers. I know they're massively out of print. I know I'm lucky, but yeah, I have those. So um, I've taken some pictures. What we have here is the dust jacket for volume one, which looks cool. And then we have the dust jacket, jacket here for volume two. And then we have the dust jacket here for volume three. Cool. Okay. So, um, right, where should we go to get those images? Well, this is another thing I wanted to touch on. When I'm getting images for my comics, obviously you can get them and scan the pages. But if you're just doing a, um, if you're just doing a dust jacket, all you tend to need is just the cover and the back and maybe the inside flap. And the best place to get those images from is literally here. It's from Comixology, um, and that's what I would highly, highly recommend that you use. Now, obviously, what I have here is comixology.co.uk, because the UK website is slightly different for legal reasons. Um, and if, if you can use that, then obviously feel feel free to use that or use the American one. So let's see where we get our images from. So let's start off with here, Superior Spider-Man. All right. So if I do a search there for Superior Spider-Man, let's see what comes up. Now, the oversized hardcover is for the earlier series, or the earlier volume, that's volume with a big V, of Superior Spider-Man. If you don't know what I mean by volume with a big V or volume with a small V, you really need to watch my new 52 reading order videos. Um, but this one here is volume 2, volume with a big V, and this one here is volume 1, volume with a big V. So, we're going to click on this one, because this is the one... Um, that is collected in those oversized hardcovers. I would highly recommend Superior Spider-Man as a series, by the way. Um, good shout, Geo. Good call. A really useful um, bit of information to have. And I love this series, so it's a pleasure to be messing around with the images from it. So these are the collected edition covers, which you've got here. Uh, that's the omnibus covers. That's just the cover they have just to show what it is. And here are the single issue covers. So let's have a quick look back at the pictures we had. We have that. We have that. Okay, and then we have this, him in a cage, him fighting some dude, um, him swinging, him swinging. Okay, right, let, let's see where we can get with this. So, obviously none of these are going to be very useful. Oh, here we are, dude in the cage. So what you do is you click on this, just click on it normally, and it will take you to that page. Once it takes you to that page, if you click on the image there, what it will do, it will bring up the image in a high-res version there. 
Um, for anyone that's interested in printing and making their own custom comics from scratch, which I also do, here is where you can get actually some high res scans of the first couple of pages without having to bother scanning and fixing them yourself. So that will save you a good half hour or so, to be honest, because there's three pages already there. But we'll start off with the cover here. All you do, right click, save image as. You can save that image, job done. Uh, what else do we have going on? Um, well, in terms of the other images that we wanted, let's see what else is available. Um, there was that, obviously we've taken that. This was the back cover, if you recall. Uh, I'll just show you here. There you go, back cover. Um, as well as that being the back cover, that's about it. All right, let's move on. And these aren't very useful, are they? Um, these are cool images though. And that brings me to a good point. I often feel you shouldn't be slavishly adhering to whatever the official publishing line is. If you like this image, for example, which is pretty badass, um, and you want me to use that for your dust, um, your dust jacket and your custom print, by all means do that. I mean, don't, don't feel constrained by some of the rubbish covers that Marvel and DC have picked. In fact, for my Spider-Man Worldwide hardcover, there's a couple of the covers there that I might change because I really just don't like them. Continuing scrolling down, uh -huh, we have one image here and we have one image there. So if I was to right click and select those, I would then have images so I could do the third dust jacket. Okay, cool. Um, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is where I source my images from. Um, if you're going to do them for a dust jacket, that's a nice, easy way to do it. Otherwise, as always, guys, just do a Google search. Um, all right. Well, with that out of the way, let's dive into GIMP. So I already have the images opened up here. Oh, Jesus. Right, here we are. Here we go. Um, and there. Now, what I've actually got here, you'll see at the top, I've actually got two images opened up that are identical. Um, I'll show you why that is in a second. But first things first, let's start with what we need to do to this image to make it work for our dust jacket. We're not going to be doing the whole dust jacket today, guys, obviously, because that would take ages. But this is a series. So we have this image here. And then the uh, the image we have on GIMP is here. Okay, so obviously there's a whole bit there which should be black and then have some writing on it. There was a quote there and that Marvel Now thing is missing. So just to have a look here. No Marvel Now thing, bit of a quote there. This is all black with that rubbish AR thing there. And then some text here. Okay, let's see what we can get with this. I'm not gonna bother with the AR thing because frankly, I think they're a pain in the neck and I don't like it on the cover. But let's let's look at where we are with the rest of this. Um, okay, well, first things first, let's clear up the bottom. So to do this, what would I do? Um, so first things first, we have the clone tool, which we looked at last time here. It's a bit huge, as you can see on the screen. So I'm just gonna diminish it in size diminish it in size reasonably substantially to that. So by pressing control and clicking here, I'm cloning that bit of black there. And then what I will do is I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start fixing this image. Um, this is relatively painstaking. Um, obviously this looks quite simple, but the bit there around the, the white line there is gonna be something that takes a little bit of time. I'm not gonna to spend too long working on that today because it'll bore the pants off you. Um, but obviously, guys, as I've always said, this is an opportunity to stick something on Netflix, to listen to a podcast, and just spend a little bit of time cleaning up your imagery. On that note, um, uh, is there anything you want to talk about? Any questions you have? Obviously not, because it's not a live chat. Um, so I'll give you a bit of an update on what's going on with the channel. Um, some of you have asked where the next custom bind videos are going to be. Um, I will put one up actually in the next week or two. I had a custom dust jacket made, um, and it's a bit of an odd one, actually. Um, it's a bit unusual in terms of things that I do, because it's not an original dust jacket. Um, but you know what? I'll wait until the video to show you to show you what I did and why. Um, I've got a, a couple of custom prints and rather unique and special things being made at the moment, but I'm not massively rushing them. Reason being, I don't really, I'm not in a position where I've got a huge amount of funds at the moment. Um, for those of you that know that I've been following my Twitter, um, I lost my job several months ago and I have been pretty desperately job hunting for a while um, and things aren't looking great and it's all a little bit depressing. So that's uh, that's one of the reasons why some of the custom work has just taken a little bit longer. Whilst I ironically have a lot more time to do this sort of stuff, um, I no longer have the, um, 
and no longer have the funds really as easily, which is a bit of a pain. Um, what else? Uh, thanks for the support on the Valiant video, guys. Um, I did a series of six uh, video doing an overview of the Valiant universe. Um, it's a sort of overview I am interested in, as opposed to the sort of overview that everyone else might do. Um, and yeah, thanks for the support, thanks for the interest. I think Valiant's really interesting. For those of you that have asked, uh, I haven't read most of Valiant, even though I have most of them. Um, it's kind of one of those things where I always buy the next deluxe edition, and I mean to read it, and it's just I have an ever-growing collection on my shelf. And it's, it's a little bit embarrassing. But I think everyone has that at some point. Everyone has some comics that they buy and they're, they're keeping on top of, but that actually, embarrassingly, they're not actually reading. And it'll be horrible if eventually I do read them all and decide I hate most of them. But who knows? Okay, so you can see here, guys, I have cleaned up most of that, barring this bit here, which I will do now. So for this, look, it's pretty fine, painstaking work, so I will move to that. Um, you see the bit I'm cloning there. If you watch how that little ghost square moves, you'll understand quite how cloning works. So for example, if I did this, you see how I'm cloning the O now. Yeah, so it's, it's just worth messing around with it to understand how cloning works. Um, how are you guys getting on with GIMP? Um, I, know, uh, I know one of you guys uh, messaged me saying that you were starting to use it and you looked at downloading it because you wanted to do this at home and at your school all you had was Adobe. Uh, totally cool. Um, I totally understand that. How are you getting on with it? Um, is everyone following along at home? Do you have any particular things that you want to see or try? And of course, if you do, let me know because I don't mind I'm messing around in a live video and showing you how I would do it. Obviously, guys, because it's a live video, I, I could zoom in and I could do this painstakingly bit by bit, um, but I'm not going to because I can't be bothered. But I'm sure you guys appreciate that. So, what we have here is the Superior Spider-Man cover that I've cleaned up the bottom. So let's look at an alternative. See? That's what it did look like, and now it looks like this. So already we're getting much closer to what we had before on the dust jacket. Okay. What's next? Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is how to resize this image. So... A oversized hardcover is a particular size. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to resize this image to be that size. So to do that, you go to image up here, scale image here, and then you've got the scale image details here. Ignore the resolution. Fortunately, Comixology provide everything at 300 pixels per inch, which is a really nice, tight resolution. And um, that's great. Leave that as it is. Never touch this. Never touch that. I don't even know what this does. So don't touch it. Here we're on pixels. I don't know what that means. So we're going to go to millimeters. Um, if you're American, you may not use millimeters. You may use something else. Fair play to you. Um, I'm not American, so this is what I this is what I use. Uh, I'm all metric. Now, notice this little length chain thing, right? That basically means if you change one, the other one changes proportionally to it. So, for an oversized hardcover, the width of an oversized hardcover is actually 190 millimeters. So if I change that, it automatically changes the height to 288. Now, the actual height of an oversized hardcover is 280, not 288. So what I need to do is change this and actually, as a result, change the proportions of this a bit. So to do that, what I need to do is unlink this chain. So now if I change one side, the other side is not going to be changed, basically. It, it unlinks them. So that's 190, and this I want to be 280. These measurements are at the top of my head. If I've forgotten them, please let me know. And if I press scale, okay, so it's changed that. So you can see it's now much, much bigger. So zooming back out, there we are, there we have it. Now that's actually not the right size for what you need. If you're going to get a dust jacket printed, what you're going to need is something called bleed. And to have bleed, what you need to do is you need to have sort of like, rather than having it 190 by 280, you need to give it a millimeter or two on either side so that whoever's printing your dust jacket for you, you can then crop it and slice it correctly. You don't need to give them much, but what I've given them here is 0 0.01 of a millimetre, which is rubbish. So I want to give them at least a millimetre. A good professional binder or um, a printer can work with a millimetre, that's not a problem. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this. I'm going to say I want it 191 wide. And I want that by, 
don't worry when um, GIMP rounds things up and makes things a weird number. I don't know why it does that, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I make it 191 by 281, and then I scale it. You'll see here, it looks almost exactly the same. In fact, it does look exactly the same to the normal human eye, but it's now gonna have a tiny millimeter or so of bleed. Cool, so that's that resize. Now we're gonna come back to that again in a minute, but I hope that was clear. If you have any questions about that, please drop me a comment below just so we can have a chat about um, whatever sizes you want and so on. Okay, so um, I've cleaned up the bottom of it. Uh, what's the next thing? Well, I wanna fix this cage element. So um, what's the best way to do that? All right, let's look at this. What I need is to have this yellow, this white bar here, and I wanna have it here covering that. So first things first, this guy's unfortunately, don't worry, this looks slightly blurry. This is like way bigger than you're gonna need. Um, so what I will do is I'll go back to cloning, hit some black there, and then scrub it up. Oh. Do you know what? I'll make it a bit bigger while I do this. So this is, welcome to my life guys. This is uh, what it is to actually sort out one of these custom things yourself. A lot of it is very painstaking, slow work. Um, yeah, unfortunately. It's very detail driven. At least that's how I find it. If you um, know someone that's willing to do it for you, if you've got a little brother that you can bribe, um, get them to do it basically. I would not recommend doing it yourself. From my point of view, um, some people, and thank you, this is very flattering, do contact me saying, will I do it for them? Can they pay me, etc., etc." et cetera? Uh, no, because a fixing like one of these dust jackets takes me like the best part of three or four hours. And I, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that for someone else. And that's why I'm doing these tutorial series. Um, I'd hardly be able to monetize it if I was showing everyone how to do it. So I've cleaned up the black stuff on either side. Uh, so let's look at where we are next. Um, right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make this cloning square a bit bigger. No, it's still a bit bigger again. And you're probably wondering, Thomas, what are you doing? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this here. And then I want to get rid of this Marvel Now bit. So, see? And then, oh, so let's adjust this. This is the beauty of the clone tool. You can do that, you see. Um, and then here, aha. Uh -huh. Not perfect, um, but also, you know, I'm, I'm not taking the time that I normally would, let's be candid here. Uh, right, so what I want to do then is fix this last little bit. What I could do is I could clone a bit here and put in a bit there and this and this and this and this. And if I was wanting to make a perfect one, obviously that's what I would do. Um, but I don't have the time or the interest right now. So Gio, if you're watching, don't necessarily do what I'm gonna do, but this is what I'm going to do. Don't tell anyone. Um, so it's not actually an accurate facsimile of the dust jacket. But you know what, he would know. He would know, Gio, no one would know. Um, okay, so there we are. You see how we're getting closer? Bit by bit, step by step, we're getting closer to this. We've got rid of the marvel now. We've got rid of the red bit on the bottom. So what do we need? Well, we need that marvel now bit on the bottom now, don't we? Okay, let's see how we do that. And this is why I have my backup image. First things first, um, I wanna show you something important, but which isn't useful for the dust jacket, but it's important. And I'm gonna do it because I don't want you guys to make the mistakes that I made learning how to do all this sort of stuff. So let's um, let's look at let's look at that. Let's look at the square. So, oh sorry, what I did there, my mistake. I keep on assuming you watched all my previous videos. You should have done, and if you haven't, shame on you. But if you haven't, I went to tools, I went to selection tools, I went to rectangle select, and then I picked this. Now, that is the crop circle. So I can crop circle, crop square. So this is where my crop image is. So let's say I'm just going to crop the cage. Let, let's just say that it's not important why. So what I do then is go image. Down here, crop to selection. Ta da! Right, great. Um, this, like I said, this isn't useful, but it's useful to show you something. I'm going to go select all. And then I'm going to go back to my other image, which we have here. There we are. And then I'm going to go edit. Oh, hang on, I've done that wrong. So if it goes, this is the, uh, the image I've cropped. If I go select all, edit, copy it. Then I go back to my dust jacket image or the base of my dust jacket and I go edit paste so what this should do is in theory this should now paste that square directly here it's a useful trick we're going to come across for later dust jackets and um, when I'm doing various clever things with certain images but for now if I was to paste this image 
It should paste perfectly on top, and the way you'll see it is there'll be a little red box there. Now that's not what's going to happen. So if I go to edit, paste, you see what's happened? That image is tiny. And the reason for that, and I'm sure you forgot the same way that I used to forget, is that I'd enlarged this image to be the right size. And this is not the right size. So let's edit, let's undo that paste. Important thing, let's uh, edit and uh, undo select all, undo select all, undo crop image, right? So this is the original image, but remember this image is tiny, like on this box it would be about the size of Spider-Man. So before we mess around with anything here, which is what I'm going to do in a second, we need to resize this. Do you remember how to do that? Follow along at home if you can. Image, scale image, change to millimeters, Break the link, width, 100 and, oh, no, 191, and height, 281. Kablam. Right, got that? Scale. And it's huge. Okay, so now we're back to where it should be. Now this matches in size the one that I cleaned up. So, why have I done that? Well, the only bit of this I want is that Marvel now. Uh, emblem. So image, no, nope. tools. Selection tool, rectangle select. Just want to crop that a little bit there. Image, crop to selection. Are we all good? You're following along at home? Now, I'm doing all this just to get the Marvel Now symbol. Let's be completely candid, guys. If I wanted to, I could just go on Google Images and crop that image out and find it somewhere anywhere. It would just be that logo. I could do that. Of course, I could do that. Um, I'm not doing that right now because I'm trying to teach you and trying to show you the various things you can do. So again, I'm just going to crop this down so it is literally just that. In fact, let's zoom in a little bit and really fine tune this as much as we can. Uh, there. Uh, I don't want any of this webbing stuff, do I? Um, there. And then there. Come on, that looks great. All right, so image, crop to selection. Great, so I've now got my Marvel now, uh, now symbol. So select all edit, copy, move back to my dust jacket image, edit, paste. Ta -da! You see where we are now? Okay. So I'm going to zoom in. First things first, um, again, looking at these tools over here, if I go to this one, uh, which is the move tool, if I click on that, it looks like a crossroads. And then if I drag this baby down, uh, here we go. Let's move it here. Yeah, whatever. Let's let's put it there. Um, and then select all, select none. Um, that's meant to deselect that. I'm trying to remember how to do this. I always forget this every time. I feel like such an idiot whenever I do this. Um, anyway, I've, I've got the clone tool. I'm going back to the clone tool. And if I'm on the clone tool, the reason I'm looking at the clone tool is I want to sort this bit in the middle out, which is really annoying. What's the best way of doing that? That that was sort of a rhetorical question, but sort of I'm just working this out as I go. Welcome to my life, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if I move it to say there, yeah, yeah, I'll do this. So I'll do that. If I move it to there, and then painstakingly, nope. Here I am just tidying up. Like I say, welcome to my life. All right, so yeah, that's done. Yeah, sod it, that's, that's good enough. Um, Okay. So, let's look back at our dust jacket image. Aha, uh -huh. getting better, isn't it? We've got rid of that. We've cleaned at the bottom, we've got Marvel now. We're, we're a fair way there. Um, Cool. Don't act like you're not impressed. So, what am I going to do here? Um, oh, that's what it was. Sorry, I, I do that sort of stuff just to... It annoys me when bits of different layers are shimmering. So I just went to Tools, Selection Tools, Rectangle Select, and I just clicked anywhere. And uh, everything stopped shimmering, which was nice. So, we're getting close to our dust jacket image, or at least a good, a good core component of it. But the next thing we need are the words, don't we? We need words. We need that. Slot Gauge, Ramos, Stegman, Kamen Kali. All right, um, 
this is going to take forever. So I'm not going to do this live. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to build this part of it live and show you what that looks like. And then if you guys can't work it out from there, I don't know how to help you. So let's go back to GIMP. Need to get some words in. GIMP, if you look up here, it hasn't got a, like a writing bit. So what do you need to do? You need to go to Word. Right, here we have Word. This is a Word document. And first things first, let's move to single page view. You should all have Word. If you don't have Word, I don't know how to help you. Uh, layout, orientation, landscape. This is just how I like to do things. You don't have to do it this way, as I always say. Um, so what are the words that I need to actually have? Slot and gauge, okay. So for slot and gauge, I will just write down slot gauge. Okay, um, let's make that bold. Let's make it bigger. Okay, let's put it on the right because remember that slot, that gauge is lined up with the Marvel now. So it's justified to the right rather than the left as is normal. Um, what else? Right, so in capital, it's got slots name, it's got gauges name. What font do I want? I know from experience that's that um, impact is a re sorry. I'm doing this so quickly. Sorry, I'm just conscious how long it's taking. Um, impact is a good uh, one there. So there we are. Right. Problem is, obviously, is that having it in black is not going to be very helpful against a black background, is it? So instead, what I'm going to do is I am going to add an outline. So you go to this button here down to outline, pick an outline, I'm gonna pick a black outline. Yeah, I'm sure you can agree, massive difference. However, if I then go to the font color, which is this button here, and I make it white, what I have are the words in white. So, important thing here, this is where you now save it, and you then convert it into a um, PDF. This is the way I do it, it's not the only way to do it. If I convert it into a PDF, it'll look like this. From the PDF, I then have the option to save as other, and I can save it as an image, which is a JPEG. Or you can leave it as a PDF if you want, in fact, because um, GIMP opens PDFs as images, it converts them. Like I say, this is the way I do it, guys. So um, you'll see here that text needs to be some kind of manipulatable image. So this is how I make those. There are other ways you can do it. If you want, you can do a print screen and then drop it into paint or I'm sure there's some software that's way better than the stuff I'm using. Feel free to do that. But you know, I'm only human and I'm doing this on obviously a pretty dramatic budget. So this is how I would do it. So with that all in mind, let's go back to GIMP and I have opened up here the image. So first things first, uh, tools, selection tools, rectangle select, our favorite. Let's just get down to our words here. Image, crop to selection. Now what happens next is why you needed to have paid attention last time when I talked about transparencies and alpha channels. I'm not gonna go through it in a huge amount of detail, so I really hope you've been following this video series through as we go. Um, we are going to go to layer, transparency. We're gonna add an alpha channel. We're gonna click here for our fuzzy select tool. We're gonna to press it right in the middle. We're gonna delete. What we have now are transparencies. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna grab the ones that miss the cut. This is just the nature, there's no way of skipping this stage, like this is just the nature of it. So what we have here is slot and gauge. All right, job done. So next, um, select all, edit, copy. I don't know what size this is, but to be honest right now, I don't really care. So I'm gonna go back to my dust jacket image here, edit, paste. All right, it's big, it's too big, but that's not a problem. So first things first, let's resize it. So you see this thing here with like a square and an arrow pointing to the square. This is the scale tool. So we're gonna click on it, we're gonna click there, and this lets you deform things. So first things first, for this, this is the exact right proportions. This looks good to me by my very rough, untrained eye. So I'm gonna click the link. Remember we talked earlier about how that changes the proportion if you leave it unchecked. I'm gonna click the link before I do anything because now it won't deform the image. It just, I can't make it wider or narrower. Proportionately, it stays the same. So I'm gonna shrink it to about there. 
let's scale that and see what happens. Okay, um, let's go to move the crossroads image here. And if I select this, I can drag it along. Okay, um, and let's drag it along a bit more. And I made the important discovery, it's still too big. So back to the scale tool, click on that, click on this, the scale cage comes up and then, how does that look? That looks all right, doesn't it? Uh, scale it, uh, let's move it up a little bit. So back to the move tool and then up a little bit. Oh, that's all right. Okay, let's, let's see this compared to the original. Slot gauge, oh, gauge is justified to the bottom of the now. I didn't notice that. Okay, I can do that. I'm still on the move tool. I can drop that down there. Okay, let's pan out, guys. Um, as usual, this is just me and my neuroses. Rectangle select, click somewhere, it stops everything shimmering. Okay. Well, so this is the dust jacket cover we're trying to make with the cage, with the writing, with the black, with the Marvel Now, with the text and so on. And in the course of the last 20 or so minutes, this is where I've got to. And remember, I got to that, guys, from, well, basically nothing right in front of you. And I got to it from this image here. And I went through that image. Now, there's some other images that I've uh, also copied from a comicsology. So there's this one, which I'm quite keen to use to make the, uh, hang on, the back image. But that's a topic for another video. Keep in mind, it's got this weird pattern here at the bottom here. There's a lot of text. There's a various few other bits and pieces. So that's a more complicated issue. But for now, this is how far we've got. In order to get the other names there, you basically do what I just did, but just do it again. If you want the AR symbol, do exactly what I did with the Marvel Now symbol, track it down. If you want some more text here of a quote, and I think there's a quote there from a comic website, that comic book resources or someone, just saying this is a must read book and so on. It's not, not true. Um, yeah, there you have it guys. This is going from basically nothing to making a pretty solid asset for the cover of your dust jacket. Um, like I say, don't act like you're not impressed. So that's kind of a long video. It's been about half an hour. Um, sorry to have taken so long. The one thing that I just want to add finally is um, for those of you that are just going to be like, hang on, that, that impact font doesn't look very good. This is a rubbish font to use. It's not quite right. What font should I use? It's a good question. Um, I'm not particularly... Uh, bothered about stuff like that to be honest but if you are bothered by stuff like that then I can definitely recommend this website this website is called what the font and basically what you do is you upload an image of whatever font you want and it'll identify it and tell you what font it is and they've got a huge bundle of fonts here um, I've actually never used this it's something that I know other people have used when they made uh, custom dust jackets but it's not my sort of thing I mean frankly I'm just not that fussy to be honest um, but yeah, so feel free to use what the font, if that's what you want to do. If you do use it and you like it, please let me know what you think. Uh, always interested to learn more from other people. So there we are, guys. Um, that's our next instalment in this dust jacket making video. Hopefully that helps. I'm going to leave it a week or two before I put the next instalment out because I want you guys to have a chance to play around with it yourself, of course. Um, always love to hear your comments um, and always love to know how I can help you further. Um, like I say, this one was just a, a comment from um, Geo from the channel Week in Geekdom, who said he was curious on seeing this work with Superior Spider-Man. So here you go, Geo. Hope that helped. If anyone's not familiar with the channel, Week in Geekdom is a brilliant channel with great production value. Geo is the nicest possible guy. Um, his videos are great. Um, Geo, you do more manga there than I can deal with, because I don't read much manga. But if you're a manga fan, it's a brilliant channel. And if you're a fan of comics in general, and especially sort of your underdog characters like Inhumans and Aquaman, who I'm personally a massive fan of, Geo is the world's biggest advocate of those. So uh, yeah, check it out. We can geek them. I'll drop a link in the description below. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Please let me know what you think. Drop any questions down below. And uh, yeah, stay in touch. You can always tweet me at I am Thomas Judge. And as always, please, please, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon and picking up the first episode of my prose episodic novel. 
which is called No Gods or Kings. It's actually free if you're on Kindle Unlimited anyway. But even if you pick it up for free and download it for free, it still means a lot. Um, I've noticed that sales have spiked a little bit recently, which is really encouraging to see. Um, and as people sort of uh, picking up the whole series, there's four books out so far. Book five will be out hopefully this summer. Like I say, I've had a pretty rough time of it over the last five or six months. So there are some delays. But um, yeah, I'll get back onto that. Um, so thanks. Please support. Please let me know what you think. Until next time, Internet, stay classy.